Hi all, uh, this is Arpit Goel. I am the CEO at Gorkovitz. I have with me Dr. Anupriya. We were scheduled to start at 5 p.m. and I think we're just going to wait for more people to join. Um, we are also streaming on YouTube on the site and on YouTube we already have a lot of questions on chat. So maybe we can address some of them. Hi all, uh, this is Arpit Goel. Maybe we can address some of them um, with Dr. Anupia. And meanwhile, um, 5 p.m. is when we will start the presentation. Before that, we can uh, uh, talk about hair loss and hair care in general. So, Doctor, one of the key questions that I see across um, um, across YouTube is um, which shampoo can they use? Are baby shampoos good for use during uh, for hair fall? Yeah. Hello, everyone. So, uh, so you know, we have been going live uh, on Instagram and I have been in touch with you through YouTube. So during the lockdown times, I thought that let's uh, tackle your questions and let's uh, have a chat uh, through Zoom because Zoom is the trend in lockdown period. So uh, I hope uh, you find this session very, very fruitful because this is for all of you and this is for everybody who has queries for hair loss and are looking for hair loss solutions. So what I would recommend all of you is just get a notebook and a pen and uh, write down whatever uh, you know we are sharing with all of you because this is going to be one informative one hour and uh, you are going to get a lot of information. Please get your notebook and pen and start noting down whatever we are uh, sharing with all of you. So the first question as Arpid asked me that uh, you have uh, a concern of what ingredient should be there in your hair loss shampoo, which is good for your hair fall. So there are multiple shampoos which are available in the market, but the hair fall shampoos usually, uh, they have uh, amino acids, they are rich in peptides, which help in giving strength uh, to your hair. And uh, make sure that these shampoos um, uh, are SLS free if you have very dry hair or chemically treated hair, because this can uh, make your hair further dry. And do not fret to use uh, conditioners after you use a shampoo, because uh, conditioner uh, nourishes your hair, it makes your hair more bouncy, more smooth and um, also maintains the pH of your hair. So does not, uh, so using a conditioner is not bad for your hair. That is a big myth, which a lot of people have. So use a shampoo and use a conditioner both. Great, thank you so much. Um, again, I think uh, a lot of you are also asking us questions about skincare. I mean, I'll just request that we'll keep those questions for a separate uh, webinar because yes, otherwise yes. we will never be able to finish it in one I hour. I understand that all of you have uh, had a chance to speak to the doctor after a really long time, but please be patient. We'll definitely have another webinar soon. So we'll not address the skincare um, questions, um, but uh, a lot of them also are to do with the, the, that. How do they increase the thickness of the hair? Is there a possibility to increase the thickness of the hair? And uh, does so are you asking for home care remedies or uh... home care remedies? Yeah. Okay. So for home care remedies, so everybody, uh, please do not be scared of, uh, you know, the medical solutions. Uh, after all, uh, you know, medical solutions are very tested. So uh, please just don't ask about home, home care remedies. I'll share both of them though. So, uh, you know, if you've all seen my videos, I have shared that the best home care remedy is uh, something that our grandmothers taught us that apply some oil on your scalp and just massage with the pulp of your fingers for five to seven minutes. What it does is that it increases the circulation on your scalp and it increases the uh, blood supply to your hair follicles and it increases the thickness of your hair. So uh, even if you're not applying an oil and if you apply hair growth solutions, which have uh, peptides, procapil and you know, all the ingredients which are medically tested that will help your hair growth further. So, uh, you know, we have created this Berkowitz Grow Foaming Hair Loss Solution after a lot of testing, and it is an extremely good solution. Just apply one ml of the solution on your scalp, massage it with the pulp of your fingers every day for a minimum period of three months, and you will see a wonderful change in your hair. Okay, thank you so much. So for those who are joining us on Zoom, uh, please uh, don't think that we've... Uh... We started yeah, without yeah, you. We have not started. I mean, we chatting. haven't started yet. We are still just uh, uh, 
uh, addressing a few questions on the live chat uh, that we are getting on YouTube. And in the meanwhile, those on Zoom can also add a question uh, on the Q&A tab. Yeah, so Priyanka is asking that which solution are we talking about? So the solution that we're talking about is uh, the Berkowitz Grow Foaming Hair Loss Solution. You can find it on berkowitz.in um, and it's a very good solution for hair fall. So other than that, I think um, let's like, we still have uh, around uh, three to four minutes to go before we start our- uh, Yeah, so I think we can take YouTube questions. Yeah, we can take a few more YouTube questions. Um, so is there a link with uh, uh, of diet and uh, probably premature graying of hair? Has there been a link established yes. yet? Actually, there is. Because uh, it has been seen that uh, people who have deficiency of copper, iron, the essential minerals, um, and selenium, zinc, biotin, they can have graying of hair. But graying of hair has various other causes, which I will be, uh, you know, discussing with all of you during the presentation. So, uh, you know, stay with us. I will be telling in detail then. But yes, diet does have a role. That is why the supplements that are there in the market for gray hair has all these essential elements. Even calcium pantothenate is a very important uh, ingredient in treating gray hair. That's great. So everything that we eat reflects on us, whether yeah. it's our skin, whether it's our hair. So definitely have a good diet. Um, I see that a lot more people have joined us on Zoom and I think we're still like now the big chunk is coming. Uh, so we'll probably we'll have time for maybe two or three more questions or on YouTube or on chat on Zoom chat. So um, I think uh, again there is uh, there is there are questions about what's a good sulfate free shampoo. I mean they're saying that we know that we have to use an SLES free shampoo, but which one's a good one? So I think you can use the you can try the Berkowitz. Uh, grow shampoo or the Berkowitz clear shampoo they're both SLES free and paraben free um, so again they, they're talking about um, so one uh, ma'am is talking about uh, that dry hair that have become thin with time and mm -hmm. I think that's a general theme that we've seen that a lot of females are concerned about dry frizzy hair which then start appearing scanty that even though the hair loss is not the primary concern the loss in density is what concerns them the most yes. so how do they handle that so, uh, you know, dry hair is something which is very common. Um, now, various precautions that you must take while you have, especially when you have dry hair, is do not take bath with hot water. That makes your hair further dry. Second, make sure you apply a conditioner. Conditioning your hair, as I told you, is not bad. Apply a conditioner, even apply hair serum uh, when your hair is a little dry but is also wet. Avoid using uh, blow dryers or extreme heat on your hair. Even if you're using it, make sure you apply hair heat protectants. And take supplements of omega-3 fatty acids, salmon oil, fish oil, increase the content of fish and, you know, uh, all the food items which contain omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, walnuts, flax seeds, uh, that will help. That's great. So... Again, there is a, uh, is there a link between certain foods and hair fall, uh, like maybe perhaps coffee? And there is a question that sometimes is considered that uh, 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 certain foods might lead to excessive hair loss. Is, is there any link that's been established or is it yes, all? Uh, there uh, are links uh, which are there that, you know, uh, increased intake of vitamin A, increased intake of vitamin E, uh, increased intake of selenium, this can cause hair, hair loss. But... Um, that is not something which is very common because to have uh, those excessive levels, you have to have a lot of vitamin A, a lot of vitamin E, which happens over a period of time. So not any dietary item uh, can cause hair loss unless and until you're, you're having protein powders uh, to increase your muscle strength, which might contain some hormones. That is a completely different thing. Or, you know, if uh, you're having some milk, which might contain some hormones, that is a completely different thing. Okay, great. So, uh, uh, doctor, I think we should start with the uh, presentation. It's 5.01 and I think people on Zoom are uh, joining us as we speak. Yes. So, let, let's introduce uh, what we have for the agenda. 
So, like I've uh, already mentioned that I am uh, the CEO at Berkowitz and uh, I, uh, it's actually a pleasure here to have such a session and to moderate it uh, with Dr. Anupriya and uh, uh, we're hoping that we'll have a lot more of these sessions in the future. For this one, we, will, we have particularly identified hair loss as a topic. Um, so, Berkowitz has a very strong legacy when it comes to hair loss. We were established in 1988 and have since then uh, catered to over 7 lakh customers uh, in, in the brand's lifetime. So, uh, we have strong uh, roots with hair loss and hair uh, and baldness. In fact, we were the first brand that pioneered hair replacement. We were the first brand to launch robotic hair transplant in North India. And we, were, we are now the largest uh, AMT. Uh, we, we provide the largest AMTs in the world uh, in terms of the number of sessions. So, uh, as, a, as a brand, we are really proud that uh, uh, our clients have trusted us so much over the last so many years. Uh, one of the concerns or one of the questions that came to my mind was that why are we talking about discussing hair during COVID and is in when, when there is a pandemic across uh, like uh, the world, does it make sense to talk about hair? So uh, the, uh, the logic that I could think of was that yes, it, it does make sense because one, that all of us need a silver lining and second, we all need to move on uh, life needs to move on and then there are also certain advantages of having a hair loss treatment done at this point. Uh, one of the primary advantages is that certain tre certain treatments have a downtime and uh, like because all of us are at home, downtime is not a problem. I mean if we have to sit at home for anyways like 7 days, 5 days if we don't want to show our face to anyone, that shouldn't be an issue at this point. Then there are also certain treatments that uh, have a very immediate result like hair replacement or hair patch or hair wig and in those cases uh, a lot of times uh, clients have apprehensions that you know we do not want others to notice such a sudden uh, change. So because I mean we are guessing that people will see us after uh, some time most of the people that we were in daily interaction with are not seeing us on an everyday basis. Uh, hair replacement uh, is a lot more appealing because that fear that people will identify that I have done something to my hair goes away. Then there is also the talk about that how because uh, we are mostly now on Zoom and video calls and everyone's on video and you can only see one's face, uh, perhaps uh, facial aesthetics are uh, more important than ever. So before we start, let's have a small poll um, on what type of hair problem you are uh, suffering this will help the doctor analyze uh, what to uh, talk about. So the, you will see these uh, people on Zoom will see this on their screens. So I'm just launching this poll and we'll give you somewhere around uh, 20 seconds to vote. And I think uh, those on YouTube can uh, then uh, uh, actually also mention what problems they are facing with. The options are that whether it's male baldness, female baldness, uh, dry and frizzy hair, or some other issue. So yeah, I think mostly uh, the I'm ending the poll right now. The mo mostly the uh, the two. Um, major chunks that we have one is that uh, male pattern baldness seems to be a primary issue and second hair loss due to hormonal imbalance and changes and then there are of course people who have selected uh, um, uh, dry and frizzy hair as well okay so uh, with that I think let me uh, hand it over to Dr. Anupriya so that she can guide you better on what hair loss is and how to deal with it yes so, uh, hello everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to interact with all of you after uh, a long time. And uh, we have been interacting with each other through YouTube and uh, through Instagram. And uh, during the lockdown period, we thought that because Zoom is the trend, we all should uh, have a chat about the most commonly asked topic about hair loss and uh, uh, solutions for baldness. So, uh, this it could not be a better time to uh, talk about all your questions, all your queries and answer them. And I hope this will be very helpful for all of you. 
what I would uh, recommend and request you all is that just get a notebook and a pen so that you can note down everything that we are discussing here and you can have it handy later. So um, as uh, Arpit just took a poll that uh, what is the most common concern of everybody, male pattern baldness. And this is the most common concern that everybody asks me as well, the questions that are mostly related to male pattern baldness and even the patients who come and visit me at the clinic are for male pattern baldness. So uh, what is male pattern baldness and which stage are you at? This is extremely important for all of you to know that which stage of male pattern baldness are you at? Because the treatments differ, the results of the treatments differ. Um, if you are in an early stage of baldness, that is stage one or stage two, then the results are better and you get uh, faster results. However, if you are at a later stage of baldness, you have excellent solutions, but limited options. So what are these options? What are these solutions? We are going to tell you everything. So can we have the next slide, please? Uh, this is uh, the grading of female pattern hair loss. Uh, they also have certain grades um, of hair loss that is grade one, two, and three. And depending upon the grade, we have solutions, which I will be talking about in the presentation uh, further. Next slide, please. Now, coming to grade one and grade two of hair loss. Grade one hair loss in men specifically uh, means that the trouble hasn't really started yet. It's just that you've got some thinning of hair. However, there is no recession of hairline. Your hairline is absolutely intact. And this is one stage where you should go to the doctor and consult and get a proscope or, uh, you know, proscope examination is, uh, uh, is a microscopic examination uh, through which you can get diagnosed that whether you have stage one hair loss or not. Uh, because if we see thinning of your hair more than 20% in one field, that means you have started having uh, hair loss and pattern baldness. So in that case, you can start applying solutions at home and you can prevent to, you know, spend any money on any of the treatments. Just do some home remedies, apply solutions like minoxidil and have some tablets and you will be able to delay it further for many, many years if you do the treatment regularly. However, if you're in grade two baldness or stage of hair loss, that means that there is recession of your hairline and there is uh, you know, as we are showing with the cursor, that there is a deepening of the frontotemporal area um, of uh, your hair. So you can take many other treatments for this kind of hair loss. Please uh, share the next slide. So if you have any of the stages of hair loss, you don't have to worry because we have uh, all the solutions here. Next slide, please. Now, as I told you, if you have grade one hair loss, very, very easy. Massage your scalp with the pulp of your fingers, apply uh, a hair loss solution, apply, have some tablets. And as I have shared in my YouTube video, increase the dietary intake of the superfoods. And this can make your hair thicker and stronger. So just to give you a little uh, bit of a revision of what these superfoods are, next slide, please. Uh, that is eggs, spinach, food rich in vitamin B12, vitamin D, food rich in vitamin A, C, E, and zinc. So uh, you can go to YouTube, see this video of mine, have a detailed, uh, you know, revision of what all foods you should take uh, if you have grade one hair loss and if you've started uh, experiencing thinning of hair. That means you must take some precautions so that you do not uh, go further in further stage of hair loss. Next, next slide, please. So if you're experiencing grade two, hair loss, then you might have to start taking some treatments at the clinic, which include platelet-rich plasma, derma roller, uh, you know, the very, very popular HLCC treatment package, which is there at Berkowitz. And I'll be explaining in detail about these treatments further on in my, um, in my presentation. And the, st and the last solution is autologous micrograph treatment, which is a very popular solution, which delays your hair fall for a good amount of time, which I'll be discussing later. Next slide, please. So these are uh, the results of uh, grade one and grade, um, the previous slide, yeah. So these are the results of grade two hair loss, uh, which were done uh, by uh, 
AMT or autologous micrograph treatment, you can see that, uh, you know, this patient had uh, frontotemporal hair loss and recession of hairline and his hair is thinning, which later became thick and the hairline which had receded had come back. So this is this was a very, very good result, which came within a month's time. And this is, um, you know, a grade two hair loss of a female, uh, where you can see that there is widening of the central partition and there is thinning of hair in the previous picture, whereas in the next picture after treatment, there is thick hair and uh, the wide partition that you saw has reduced significantly. Next slide, please. Now, um, do not think that you know, you're limited to PRP or AMT treatments only if you have grade one or grade two hair loss. You can even go for a transplant if there is recession of your hairline and if you want some hair in the frontotemporal areas or the corners of your hair, you know, hairline over here. So if you want hair over here, you can go for a hair transplant where you would require very few grafts, just 1500 to 2000 grafts. The duration of the surgery will be less and you will get wonderful results. So you can see the before after picture here. Now, are you in grade three or four hair loss? In grade three hair loss, uh, other than, you know, as I told you in grade two hair loss, there is just recession of the frontotemporal areas. In grade three hair loss, there is deepening further of this frontotemporal area, along with loss of hair from the vertex, that is from the central area of the scalp. So, Grade three hair loss can be treated with the similar solutions that I had discussed before. And uh, these are the pictures of our patients who had come to us with grade three hair loss and grade four hair loss. Grade four hair loss is further deepening of the frontotemporal angles and the vertex widens further. That is, there is more hair loss from the central part of your head and there is very scanty hair left now. So next slide, please. What are the treatments available? The similar solutions, you can go for AMT, hair transplant, plated rich plasma, and you can even go with hair replacement. Hair replacement or a hair patch. A lot of people do not want to, uh, or you know, they are not able to go with regular treatments like PRP because uh, you have to get it done every two months to three months and you have to take medicines along or do the medical therapy along with the clinic treatment. Some people want a head full of hair and they want quick solution. So hair replacement is a very good quick solution and you do not have to take medicines regularly. You do not have to apply anything on your scalp. Just apply a hair patch with good density with a haircut of your choice and the solution is there. Next slide, please. So uh, these are actually patients who came to us with grade three and grade four hair loss and you can see the before after pictures. This is just within a month of treatment and they had a head full of hair um, just within a month. So the results are very, very good. Next slide, please. This is a patient. Um, actually, there are two patients who actually underwent hair transplant. And uh, we had transplanted around uh, 2,500 grafts uh, in the hairline and in the frontotemporal area. And the results were excellent. The patient was very happy. Uh, you can see that even after six months, the results uh, are very, very good. And after one year, as we all say that after hair transplant, you must wait for a year to get full results. You can see the difference. Next slide. So I think we'll do another poll now that sure. everyone's aware of what grade of hair loss they have. Um, we can now at least ask them to identify which grade of hair loss you think you have. So I am um, launching the poll on Zoom and again on YouTube, like we've said before. People can write their own stage of hair loss, whatever they think is applicable to them. We haven't discussed in detail about stage six and stage seven, but uh, you know, stage seven um, is, I will be discussing it further on. But I'm sure that in the first picture that I shared, uh, I had shown all the stages of hair loss. I hope you had identified your own stage of hair loss there. Great, I think we can stop the poll now. Um, most of you are uh, either stage two, stage three. 
some of us uh, some of you also from uh, like stage 1 female pattern uh, baldness stage 1 seems to be the primary uh, uh, set and then otherwise like male i think from male males uh, are sort of varied to from every stage mostly from stage 3 vertex is the primary um, and some are on also really a good grade news grade. you know that people uh, have uh, started becoming more aware and are more concerned in the earlier stages of hair loss than in stage 5 6 or 7 because then you have multiple treatment options where you can choose from exactly so that's actually a very good news i'm very happy to see that people are mainly from grade 1 or grade 2 uh hair loss that's really good so uh some fun uh now we have the workovitz bollywood gossip column for you that uh, these are all uh, a few of your favorite celebrities that have either go undergone hair transplant hair replacement or some sort of uh, treatment you can see their before afters almost everywhere in some cases it's almost evident that it, they they are wearing something uh, which is hair replacement or hair patch in some cases it's uh, not as evident and it's probably hair transplant so again like um, uh, these are only on speculation and on based of uh, and these are based on uh, the judgment is based on that we've seen these celebrities but uh, i hope uh, someone this is just for fun anyway no but then uh, i'm you know all these uh, you can see the before after of kapil yeah. sharma that uh, his hair patch um yeah. is there and his before picture his hairline had receded so significantly and now his look has completely changed when he comes on kapil sharma show even i was so surprised to know that ranbir kapoor uh, you know wears a hair patch even though we haven't got any uh, you know news from an internal there source is no, yeah, there is no before picture for ranbir uh, kapoor yeah, before he is always what the hairline hair looks a little fake yes Yes, and uh, Salman Khan. I think it's very like it's sort of uh, understood in the industry that he uh, underwent a hair transplant in the frontal area and then is wearing a hair patch at the back. Yeah, and then of course is wearing a hair patch. Pretty evident. Not something few, which is uh, not. Some of a few other uh, 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 celebrities who have undergone hair transplant as a surgery. One is I think Sanjay Dutt. He got it done around ten years back. Even uh, Akshay Kumar. Akshay Kumar got one done. Yes, he got a hair transplant. Hey, got a hair transplant done, and um, there's also talk about Shah Rukh Khan sometimes wearing a hair patch, but no, like I think he has too much yeah. hair to be bald. If, and... if he if he has a hair patch, then it's uh... flawless. Yes. Yeah, it's flawless. <laughs> so we've actually uh, a lot of you had questions on Zoom when you had registered. So we uh, took some down, and we'll be handling these questions along with the ones that you uh, ask on uh, Zoom and YouTube. So uh, the first question, doctor, is that what does one need uh, uh, to undergo hair transplant, and what are the post care that what is the post care that's required after hair transplant? So you know the the pre and the post requisites for hair transplant. The prerequisite is that uh, do not take any blood thinners. Stop taking uh, the stop taking any multivitamins. Ten uh, days or at least 7 days before you go for a transplant stop smoking and having alcohol 3 days before a transplant and uh, get all your tests done which are recommended to you by the transplant team uh, to make sure that there is no complication during the surgery get your bp check get your sugar level check and after the surgery uh, you can resume your work let me tell you guys that uh, you can resume your work from the very next day after you get your transplant done but uh, you know you have a bandaid there on your scalp uh, wherever the transplant has been done only due to aesthetic reasons we recommend that uh, you know get your bandaid removed after 3 days um, get your scab removed after 7 days but you can rejoin your work the very next day if you do not if you're not conscious about the aesthetics uh, and the appearance of your own um other post requisites of hair transplant are that you cannot exercise vigorous exercises or heavy weight lifting for a month uh, you can start uh, walking brisk walk also is allowed after a week's time you just have to uh, you know uh, take two three pillows and rest uh, on it with vertical head and uh, you know a proper position which will be told to you uh, after you get your transplant done uh, make sure to have the antibiotics make sure to apply whatever solutions are given to you uh, after the transplant surgery and uh, you must make sure to use these medications at least for a year so that the results of the transplant are better uh, 
there is uh, you just have to uh, have precautions from the sun from dust no major precaution you can travel uh, you can resume your work from the very next day and you can even have a brisk walk or start exercising after a week's time great so uh, a lot of uh, uh, the females that had uh, applied for the registration on zoom they uh, they were confused on what really causes female pattern hair loss and Actually, what yeah so there are various causes of female pattern hair loss this is a huge discussion but i'll try to cut it short uh, that first there is patterned female pattern hair loss like we have a uh, genetic pattern of hair loss for men there is a uh, genetic hair loss pattern for women second uh, the hair loss uh, can be due to telogen effluvium what is telogen effluvium that it can be due to uh, iron deficiency it can be post stress post uh, pregnancy uh um, you know uh, due to deficiency of uh, uh thyroid i mean th- there is imbalance in the th- thyroid hormones uh, so there can be a lot of causes uh, uh due to uh, you know which can cause telogen effluvium there can be nutritional deficiencies nutritional deficiencies like vitamin d b12 iron again uh, then there can be uh, you know uh, due to making a particular kind of uh, a hairstyle there can be a uh, uh, thinning of hair uh, wherever you're stretching uh, your hair to be that's called the traction alopecia mm-hmm. um and uh, there can be chronic telogen effluvium which is usually seen in post menopausal women um and uh, the age group is 40 to 50 years of age and it can be due to uh, variation in your hormones so you need to go to uh, your doctor to get yourself diagnosed that what is the cause of your hair loss so that we can give you medications accordingly because with every different diagnosis the medications are different it is very very important for you to consult a doctor for it because of uh, shortage of time i mean i will skip a few questions from this yes, list sure um i think we've already addressed uh, no we haven't so what about uh, medications and shampoos for hair fall i mean are there any otc products or are there any prescription products that perhaps um, are like people can try and what are the results that they can expect yeah so there are uh, you know lot of medications and shampoos available in the market so it leaves everybody confused what to have now depending upon your diagnosis you need to have a particular medication the most common cause for hair loss in females is telogen effluvium as i just mentioned and uh, the most effective solution for that is application of uh, solutions which contain procapil um, you know and hair growth so other hair growth solutions like uh, we have the berkowitz grow foaming hair solution that is very very effective uh, which should be applied on your scalp every night and should be continued for a minimum period of 6 months that is very very important you can have hair supplements like biotin which contain biotin and uh, you know vitamin b12 vitamin d vitamin a c e but make sure that you uh, ask your doctor and then you start taking it so that uh, it can be properly Uh, measure that how many uh, supplements you are taking and for how long you are taking but you should have it for 6 months and then take a break okay uh so as we have already discussed that a lot of uh, uh, females that are attending this webinar they're concerned with hair loss due to hormonal imbalance yes. this can be due to pcos this can be due yes. to thyroid or perhaps post pregnancy so yes. what is the right way to handle um, uh, such a uh, hair loss you know we need to get you tested first it is very important to diagnose your condition so whether your hair loss is because of pcod or because of thyroid first get your tests done make sure that it is because of this reason and if it is because of thyroid uh, go to an endocrinologist start your medications and it will be better uh, if it is due to pcod may if your weight is you know uh, not according to your height then make sure you exercise lose some weight your hormones will be back to normal to quite an extent if not then you have to be on hormonal therapy um and what about post pregnancy hair loss does that i think that sort of uh, yeah, normalizes yeah that's also very very common post pregnancy hair loss is uh, that is an again telogen effluvium which is very common and it happens usually 3 to 6 months after pregnancy uh, and uh, the main solution that we can give you for that is some hair loss solutions that that is like berkowitz grow solution and prp PRP works wonders. So even PRP or bio PRP works wonders for this. It immediately seizes hair fall and it increases the nutritional supply to your hair, which increases hair growth. Great. 
um one uh, recurring question is that what type of care is necessary for curly hair so uh, for curly hair make conditioner your best friend make sure you do not take bath with very hot water condition your hair very very well use a shampoo uh, which does not contain sls be sure about that and then use a conditioner use a deep conditioner as well uh, you know we have a very good deep conditioner in berkowitz range which is called the uh, berkowitz nourish deep conditioning mask apply it for 20 to 30 minutes and uh, your curls will be nice and bouncy make sure uh, you apply a serum after you take a bath so how much ever you can give nourishment to your curls that will be better use uh, you know uh, microfiber towels do not rub them too much do not use too much heat all of that okay so uh, last question before we continue the presentation i'm uh, what is the longevity and maintenance that's required for the treatments that we're talking about i mean what is the longevity of a hair transplant i mean agar ek bar humne hair transplant kara liya ke dobara puri zindagi nahi karana padega similarly for amt and prp are they for life or do they need any maintenance okay so uh, transplant puri zindagi uh, so you, you know what happens is that how we do a hair transplant is that we take hair from the back of your scalp and we put it in the areas which are deficient of hair now the hair that we take from the back of your scalp is resistant to hormones which causes hair fall so it is said that all the hair transplant that we do is for life wo uska result zindagi bhar chalta hai lekin because of the environmental changes your lifestyle your dietary habits um uh, we have seen in our experience that the result of hair transplant lasts for 15 to 20 years even that is good enough and uh, agar aapne sirf apne fronto temporal areas mein transplant karaya hai aur baki areas mein nahi karaya it is very important that you take care of the rest of your hair so that these do not go away and the transplanted hair do not stick out so for that you must take some hair restoring treatments like prp and amt so for how long do their results last amt results last for about a year and uh, prp results last for about 6 months after you take regular sessions okay so i think we can continue with the presentation now okay so as i discussed before about uh, grade 1 2 3 4 of hair loss now coming to grade 5 and 6 of hair loss um i'm happy that none of you is in this stage i mean i think very few of you are in this stage of hair loss but a grade 5 uh, ke andar kya hota hai that there is a very thin band of hair which is left between the front hair and between uh, the bald patch which is there on the top of your head so very thin band is there and the rest of the area uh, the hair is very very thin and they have almost uh, they are almost not there so uh, in grade 6 of hair loss this thin band also goes away and uh, you have a complete bald area on the center of your scalp so that is grade 6 of hair loss the next slide please now what treatments can we do in grade 5 and 6 of hair loss as i told you the treatments become a little more limited and that is we can go for a hair transplant we can go with a combination of hair transplant and autologous micrograft treatment or we can go with hair replacement however these solutions are very very good and they give you a head full of hair now you can see that the results in hair transplant in uh, grade 6 of hair loss such wonderful results are there and uh, we have to just make sure that your donor area is good enough to give you such kind of result and this is a grade 2 hair loss uh, in a woman um, and you can see that how wonderful the results are after a hair transplant so if you are in grade 7 hair loss uh, where you do not uh, have uh, you know any hair um, at all and when there is very less hair in the back of your scalp also you can go for hair replacement and you can see the wonderful results actually this patient had grade 6 hair loss and uh, the uh, because we have shaved his hair in this area um, that is why you cannot see the rest of his hair but uh, this before and after is just amazing in both the patients that we have so as i was talking about grade 7 hair loss that if you have very little hair uh, you know even in uh, the occipital area of your scalp uh, or the back of your scalp and there is absolute baldness in the frontal area and on the vertex area then you are grade 
um, in such cases sometimes hair transplant also is very difficult because uh, the hair quality in the back of your scalp is very very thin and this kind of quality is not good enough to be transplanted in the front side of your scalp because it does not give you a good coverage so in such cases hair patch is the best solution can we have the next slide so you can see that uh, patients who have had grade 7 of hair loss when they uh, got a hair patch um, what kind of a change their look gets and this really increases the confidence their uh, you know um, their work profile even their personal uh, profile everything changes completely and it is just amazing i just love the change that happens after a hair patch yep so uh, telling you in detail about the various treatments that we have i'll be telling it in short that uh, i was telling you about hlcc therapy that is there in berkowitz which includes a combination of low level laser therapy and derma roller treatment low level laser therapy increases your circulation on your scalp and it increases the uh, growth factor and nutritional supply to your hair which increases the growth of your hair and derma roller is a handheld rolling instrument which we just roll on your scalp i'm sure everybody must be knowing about it and it causes certain micro injuries which increases the growth factor uh, to your hair and it increases what's great about this image is that here you can also see some of the injuries i mean if you this, yeah. this particular portion yes. you can see these small dots which yes. are basically uh, the micro injuries that the derma roller so is causing when we create these micro injuries then we put in some solutions on your scalp which help in helps in hair growth as well next slide please so you can see uh, the results of only hlcc treatment uh, with derma roller and laser after 6 months how wonderful the results are so perhaps uh, for those suffering from uh, any kind of hair loss due to hormonal imbalance there mm -hmm. is a slight uh, the, the, i mean llt or, or laser therapy is can actually uh, lead to some kind of hair growth for yeah yeah definitely definitely these are very good treatments for uh, you know initial stages of hair loss and for patterned hair loss which happens in pcod and hormonal problems now the next treatment is platelet rich plasma um, this is also a very popular treatment i'm sure a lot of people would be knowing about this that uh, what we do in this treatment is that we take some blood uh, from the patient we separate the plasma and we inject it on the scalp this plasma is rich in various growth factors which provide nutrition to your hair and it helps in hair growth uh and multiple sessions of this are required at least 3 to 4 sessions for you to see the results and you must take medications along with it too so it has wonderful wonderful results can you can we have the next slide and uh the next uh, treatment that is recently launched in berkowitz and it is a wonderful treatment because we have actually tested it on patients first and then we have launched it it's called the bio prp uh how it is different from a prp is that we activate the platelets within a vial that is we uh, activate them in vitro and uh, this releases growth factors and as soon as we inject it in your scalp the concentration of growth factors is very very high and this causes faster results and just three sessions of this treatment and you'll see wonderful results within 3 months next slide now autologous micrograph treatment this is uh, you know the speciality of berkowitz that uh, berkowitz is the only clinic in the world which has done 300 successful treatments of this uh, autologous micrograph treatment and we have had so many happy patients what we do in this treatment is that we take a small biopsy or a tissue piece from the back of your scalp make a solution out of it inject it in your scalp and uh, because these uh, the cells that we receive from in this solution they are light stem cells or progenitor cells they multiply at a very fast rate and they help in increasing your and increasing the growth of your hair and increasing the thickness of your hair it's a wonderful wonderful treatment and you do not need to take this treatment multiple times if you're an outstation patient or even if you stay here and you do not want to take multiple treatments at the clinic just one session of this and for one year you're free we'll just tell you some medications to use at home that's all next slide hair transplant this is a uh, one treatment which gives you a permanent result at least for 15 to 20 years now berkowitz is also a pioneer in hair transplant because we have done more than 7500 transplants and so many patients i mean almost all our patients are so happy with the results 
the uh, best feature is that we have a lot of combinations of treatments that we offer to all of you. And one is Max Pro FUE. Max Pro FUE is, uh, uh, you know, a technique in which we just take out the graft and we immediately implant it. So the life of the graft is very, very high. Robotic direct hair transplant is the best uh, transplant, um, you know, option amongst all the ones that I've listed here. And uh, Berkowitz was the first clinic in North India to get a robotic uh, machine. And this is a suction assisted graft extraction with very little uh, or feather touch implantation, which ensures a uh, very high graft survival. The other is Max Grow Plus, which uh, involves a combination of Max Grow FUE and the AMT procedure, which helps in enhancing the present hair that you have. So if you are a grade three hair loss or a grade two hair loss, then Max Grow Plus would be a very good combination for all of you. And symbiosis technique is very good for people who uh, you, you know, have a, a higher grade of hair loss. So we can do and form a very natural hairline in the front. And if you want a higher density at the vertex of your scalp, we can put a hair patch. So symbiosis technique is also excellent. So what is the advantage of getting a hair transplant done at Berkowitz? That it is no touch implantation, a very high definition hairline, because we have a very trained team. Uh, the speed of uh, our hair transplants is very, very fast. And the transaction rate or the damage of the hair grafts is very low because we have such an experienced team. So talking about non-surgical hair replacement or hair patch. This is one of my favorite treatments because you know what happens in this treatment is that there is a complete personality changeover. Uh, a patient comes to us and within half an hour, the, uh, the personality is completely changed. The confidence of the person completely changes yeah. and uh, we can completely customize uh, this treatment for you. Whatever kind of hairstyle you want, you want, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the salt and pepper look in your hair. We can color your hair like that. So uh, it is a completely, uh, you know, change, uh, makeover change sort of a treatment. And it has no surgery, no pain involved. Uh, you can, uh, you know, shampoo your hair the way you want to, set your hair, style your hair. You can apply gel, whatever you want to do. And uh, this completely becomes a part of you. So this is a wonderful treatment. Over to you, Arpit. I think, um, yeah. So, um, like, uh, doctors already talked about how uh, Berkowitz is the pioneers in hair replacement. So these are just some of the uh, numbers um, that... Uh, that we do and uh, it's all the love and the, all the respect that we get from our customers which is which just keeps us going uh, one of the like it's just like i follow this rule of thumb generally where uh, we talk about what are the expectation of results and uh, everyone sort of can imagine what what results they can expect from a treatment by imagining how they looked these many years back so for example for a hair loss treatment that is prp or hlcc you can imagine how you looked around two to three years back and that is the ideal result for that treatment and similarly for hair replacement it in in some cases it can even give you density that you had maybe 15 to 20 years ago or maybe in some cases density that you've never had so which is why in fact it's uh, chosen frequently by celebrities because they are looking for a very high density uh, in high definition so which is why they choose hair replacement more often than hair transplant but however for an average person who's looking for coverage and who's looking for um, perhaps to go back only 10 years or seven years, um, uh, a hair transplant is a very valid option. So we have another poll that which treatment appeals to you. Um, so let me just make this live. Again, those on um, YouTube can write it down that which treatment excites them the most. Yeah, we can actually see your com comments and uh, it'll be lovely to read all your comments. Yeah. So, you know, amongst these hair loss products are something that can be done at home. Um, the HLCC treatment package actually contains uh, the laser therapy and the derma roller together. Uh, PRP treatment uh, is something which is very common and, um, you know, just to uh, 
help you remember what these treatments were. PRP was something uh, where we took your blood, growth factor injections, and AMD was autologous micrograft treatment, um, which in which we took a graft from the back of or skin uh, tissue from the back of your scalp, and it uh, really increases the thickness of your hair. Hair transplant, everybody knows, and hair repla replacement is a hair patch that immediately gives you a result. So a lot of them are excited about, they're equally excited about PRP, AMT, hair transplant and hair replacement and hair loss products. HLCC okay. and LLLT is not very exciting to okay. our viewers right now. Okay. Great. So uh, some of the other FAQs that we received uh, uh, at the time of the Zoom sign up. I think we've already talked about uh, and pattern about, yeah. of yeah. So one of the one of the key uh, uh, questions is: Can dandruff uh, induce uh, hair fall, like uh, normally and in transplanted hair? Because I've been yeah. getting this question on YouTube and even on Zoom. That yeah. please talk about dandruff problem. So what happens is dandruff itself does not cause significant hair fall as much. It causes hair fall because dandruff causes itching of the scalp. We scratch our scalp and that causes hair fall because we cause injury on your on our own scalp while we itch. So that is the reason why dandruff should be controlled. And uh, there is, you know, because there is increased uh, multiplication of the fungal element on our scalp, it does lead to a lot of itching. So that is why we have to control it so that it does not cause and uh, it does not cause you embarrassment in public and also it does not cause hair fall. Uh, what about oils? I mean, there is a lot of talk about onion oil. There is a lot of talk about yeah. Ayurvedic oils. Do they have any effect? What is so, the you know, onion effect? oil in particular. I've seen yeah. so many companies formulating yeah. onion oils. And, uh, you know, so many people asking me, are onions effective? Can we take out onion juice at home and use it for our hair fall? So let me tell you all that uh, there is no, uh, you know, medical, uh, you know, uh, result uh, in any journal that says that onion juice or onion oil is effective in hair loss particularly but in alopecia areata or uh, there is where there is patchy hair loss the results of onion juice are proven uh, and it is uh, seen that when onion juice was applied with uh, you know and it was compared with the normal water that was applied on the scalp the people who applied onion juice had significantly higher results. But that was seen in alopecia areata or patchy hair loss. Now, does onion oil uh, improve your uh, hair growth? Mm -hmm. So, first of all, if you apply any oil and you massage on your scalp, it will improve the circulation and it, it will lead to thickening of your hair. But yeah. onion oil itself also has benefits. Now, what benefit does it have? That it contains sulfur. Uh, it has antioxidant properties also, and it has antibacterial properties also. So mm -hmm. anti with antibacterial properties, it will prevent any infection. With antioxidant properties, it will protect your scalp. And because of the sulfur in it, that kind of, uh, you know, protects your hair. And uh, there is a little bit of stinging or some sort of sensation with sulfur and perhaps that sort of um, may perhaps yeah. lead and to... And also, uh, our hair strands sulfur. are actually made up of disulfide bonds. Mm. So when there is sulfur uh, in the onion oils, they kind of strengthen these disulfide bonds and it helps. Okay. So these are few studies which are there, but its main uh, results in medical journals is in patchy hair loss or alopecia area. Okay. Um, I think we've uh, mostly uh, we've covered the all. Questions. So let me go through the chat and the questions that we've yeah. received otherwise. Uh, so one of the questions that... Um, yeah. Uh, does hair patch harm existing hair? So uh, what happens is it's not the hair. Um, you know, we have to shave off your hair before we apply a hair patch. We cannot apply a hair patch when you have your hair there. So because we'll shave off your hair, uh, I mean, you cannot have your original hair while applying a hair patch unless and until... You know, there, is, there is also no research to uh, point towards an accelerated hair fall uh, no, there after is no. wearing a hair patch. So whatever normal hair patch one would suffer, uh, uh, that is the kind of hair fall that you get uh, even after hair patch. Yes, yes. 
uh, there is a, a client of ours who is uh, who's saying that he got the hair transplant done from Brokowitz and he's saying that uh, the front hairline is, it's been one year, the front hairline is very good. But however, the middle or the vertex area, the density is not that great. Mm. And he took it uh, with PRP. Mm. And uh, what what does he have to do f- to cover that area now? I mean, in future, does does he go for another hair transplant or does he go for any you other? You know, uh, we can ask the patient to share his pictures with our team because I would need to see his pictures at how much uh, area does need to be needs to be covered yeah. uh, after the transplant on the vertex area. Now, if it is less, we can just uh, suggest you to use medications at home, and that will help. If not, you can take some PRP sessions again uh, or uh, you you can try out bio prp sessions yeah. and that will also help but on an average i think this this uh, also uh, brings to light a very important point on the failure of hair transplant in the vertex area yes or the limitations not failure limitations is perhaps Limit- the right word yeah. so the uh, percentage of result is very high in the frontal hairline but the results uh, you know they are about 60% when it comes to the vertex mm-hmm. yep so uh, ideally, th- there are other solutions that perhaps an AMT or something of that sort we'll have to do. Yes. Um, so there is a question on what does uh, what is the effect of PRP on uh, f- uh, the female's hair? I mean, ideally, it's the same effect that will be on a male's hair as well. It will thicken it and you will see accelerated hair growth over the next few months. Hmm. Uh, let me ask another other few. Like, what are the... Um, any products that can volumize hair, I feel that's a very, um, uh, it's a very aesthetic, not aesthetic, I mean, perhaps so, a superficial uh, For increasing hair volume? Yeah, I mean. So, you know, there are shampoos actually available in the market which contain uh, proteins, um, you know. Ceramides, and perhaps. Sorry? Ceramides and proteins. Yeah, ceramides and proteins. Mm-hmm. Because when these shampoos are used, they actually, uh, you know, give a fuller look to your hair because they form a coating on your hair. And this kind of gives uh, a fuller look to your hair. So there, there are, actually, are there are two uh, schools of thought. One is that a lot of conditioner and especially those that uh, use uh, some kind of a silicone coating make the hair too heavy. So then the hair ends up sticking to the base rather than actually standing up or giving that appearance of volume. Well, uh, you know, when the hair becomes a little sticky, there is less static force. And uh, mm. uh, so they become also, they become a little more bouncy and uh, uh, and they are more smoother. So even silicones, they are used in conditioners um, and in hair thickening shampoos so that uh, they have this little coating on your hair, which gives you a little more voluminous appearance. So uh, if there are shampoos with say volumizing effect, then just look at the contents behind and I'm sure they would contain these ingredients, which would make your hair look a little more bouncy and thick. Yeah, yeah. Um, one um, uh, gentleman has also inquired that he actually faced some kind of accelerated hair fall after uh, PRP and minoxidil. Yes. So for how long? I mean, uh, if you started the treatment a month before, I mean, if you started the treatment in May and you're experiencing the hair fall in mid-June or in late May, That's absolutely normal because what happens is that every hair strand of ours, it has various stages. It has a growth phase, it has a resting phase, and it has a shedding phase. What these treatments do is that they bring all the hair follicles in the resting and the shedding phase first so that they can start a brand new hair cycle. And they bring all of them in the hair growth phase. So if you're experiencing hair fall after four to six to eight weeks also, that's absolutely normal. Just be patient for a period of three months and just continue with the treatment with trust in us that you will definitely get results minimum three months. Then only we can actually analyze that whether this treatment is not suiting you or it is. Okay. Uh, What are the side effects of using minoxidil? So uh, minoxidil was actually uh, a treatment uh, for hypertension. So when you uh, take oral minoxidil especially, it might cause hypotension in a few individuals. Hypotension as in low BP in a few individuals. Mm. Uh, Also, it can cause growth of hair on your scalp or on your forehead, sorry, not on your scalp. That's the reason why we are using it. 
on your forehead if the minoxidil drops on your forehead uh, so we always tell our patients to make sure while they apply it do not have any solution on your forehead or it can lead to some hair growth on your forehead okay. and wash your hands uh i don't know what this is is it neopeptide or neoptide i have never heard it before i mean there's there's a question that says that does it um increase hair loss okay. anyway what what is the, what is the uh, what are the uh, mostly do's and don'ts after getting a hair transplant done and how what is the pain uh, like a lot of people are concerned about how much pain it will cause and what are the risk factors that are associated with the surgery like hair transplant so as i discussed before that the prerequisites of a transplant would be that get all your tests done do not have aspirin uh, do not have multivitamins which have vitamin a vitamin e or ginkgo biloba uh, avoid having green teas uh, because it can cause a little more bleeding while uh, you are uh, getting a transplant done and uh, no alcohol and no smoking 3 days before you go for a transplant get your sugar level checked get your bp checked and then go for the surgery now after the surgery you have to make sure to uh, you know have uh, three two to three pillows and you have head high position while you sleep uh, do not uh, go outside in the sun and in the dust without wearing a cap we'll give you a loose cap to wear so wear a loose cap for at least two to three weeks if you're going out um, and um, you can join your work the very next day make sure you get your bandage removed after three days at the clinic and get your a crust removed after 7 days have the antibiotics properly have uh, apply the medication on your scalp and have the oral multivitamins that are given to you by the clinic use the shampoo that is provided to you uh, only because uh, it is very important to uh, be gentle with your scalp in the first month no heavy exercises for a month um, and uh, avoid alcohol and smoking for a week's time after uh, the surgery is done because it decreases the circulation and blood supply to your scalp if you smoke um yeah. and uh, yeah that's all so they are not uh, you know the uh, even the post treatment instructions that we give to a patient are not something which will hamper your lifestyle at all uh you can easily manage them for a month and uh, go ahead with the transplant without any fear and uh, so also there was another question that uh, how painful it is yeah. so before we do the surgery uh we make sure to uh, give you anesthesia on your scalp so the pain is only of the needles which are used to give you anesthesia that's it after the surgery you might experience a little bit of discomfort but that's not pain during the surgery after we give you anesthesia you do not you do not feel anything if even if you feel anything you can always tell the surgeon to apply some more uh, anesthesia and you'll be good after the surgery there'll be a little bit of discomfort which can easily go with uh, you know a few painkillers which will be prescribed to you and the antibiotics which will be given to you mm. so do not uh, i mean this is something which is uh, very uh, normal after the surgery and uh, it's a minor surgery it's not a major surgery okay uh, what is the course of treatment in case uh, the hair loss is uh, arising due to thyroid or perhaps psoriasis and uh, or pcos okay so uh, i have already discussed about thyroid that you know just go to your um, get your tests done if it is high or if it is low uh, take the medications there in fact there are a few medications which can cause uh, thyroid medications which can cause hair fall as well which have salts like uh, you know carbimazole and propyl thiouracil mm -hmm. that can cause hair fall but uh, if you're having any other salt it might just not cause any hair fall at all and uh, once your thyroid levels are fine you might not see any hair fall but uh, other than that even if you're having these medications if you go for treatments like platelet rich plasma bioprp amt which give you another boost of nutrition then definitely you'll see results in increasing thickness of your hair and uh, increased growth of your hair yeah. when if you're uh, if you have pcod um you will have a pattern female hair loss and uh, i have had a lot of patients of pcod who come to me uh, for treatment and amt has been like magic to them so um, i did amt in a 22 year old girl who had pcod and uh, after doing her amt we started her on minoxidil and uh, some oral supplements 
and she had wonderful results within three months of treatment. So whether you go for AMT or you can also go for BioPRP to... Uh, Another question that a lot of uh, uh, people have asked is that PRP and AMT look scary. I mean, you're talking about needles in the head. So is it actually as scary as it looks and is no, it as painful? It really isn't. Especially, um, you know, the needles that we use they are 32 gauge needles. I mean, they're so small. It's like if you've, um, if you're a female and if you've undergone waxing and threading for your eyebrows or your upper lips, mm -hmm. then this pain is even lesser. So uh, for a male, yes, please get your uh, threading done <laughs> to understand <laughs> what the pain is. <laughs> but it's really not much. Great. Uh, another question that I have is the like if my scalp is oily or dry, does that affect my my use of minoxidil or does that will, like what all precautions do I need to take according to? Uh, no, that really does not um, affect um, on using minoxidil. But what affects yeah. if you have dandruff on your scalp, if you have very dry scalp and if you have very flaky scalp, and uh, you know uh, then that can affect the absorption of uh, yeah. minoxidil. So uh, make sure that your scalp is clean and it does not have dandruff. Uh, even with very oily scalp, because if you have a uh, lot of oil production in your hair and that can increase the growth of fungus on your hair, make sure you apply certain solutions, which can be advised to you in Berkowitz as well, and apply that solution so that your hair becomes, uh, your scalp becomes clean and it can uh, absorb the minoxidil better. Okay. Oh. Uh I think let, let's wait for a few other, if there are any other questions. That, on the chat. Yeah. You can even check uh, YouTube. Or on YouTube. I'm actually yeah. checking YouTube on the side. Uh, mostly, I think we've addressed all questions. The questions related to cost, I think you can all inquire uh, at Berkowitz and yeah. um, a sales rep will get in touch with you. What I can assure is that we are priced... Uh, very uh, like very competitively yep i think let's see chat i mean maybe on the zoom chat if you have any um so is there what about uh, facial hair transplant i mean if you're talking about beard hair transplant or eyebrow hair transplant what are the success what is the success rate it and is very successful. actually we should have included a picture of a beard transplant and a yeah. eyebrow transplant because we have done a lot of cases of both and uh, the best thing about uh, eyebrow transplant is that you hardly require two to three hundred drafts and uh, the results are wonderful. Um, and uh, with beard transplant, if you have a patchy uh, hair growth in your beard, we just take uh, a few grafts from the back of your scalp and we transplant it and the results are amazing. Yeah. Both the procedures are very, very successful. Uh, any long-term study on the effect of minoxidil? So, uh, there has been no side effect as such uh, with the use of minoxidil because it has been approved by the FDA to be used as a treatment for hair loss and for patterned hair loss and it can be used for lifetime. Yeah. So uh, unless and until you do not apply it properly uh, and you do not apply it in the dose that has been recommended to you by your doctor, then it will not have any long-term effect side effect. Um, so a few people are concerned that, you know, I mean, since it's locked down, the only yeah. treatment that they have is it has to be uh, some home remedy or something that they can order online and perhaps start using. So what is the basic minimum treatment that one can start? Um, for hair loss? For hair loss, yes. So, uh, you know, one basic minimum treatment uh, that you should start is start using uh, a hair growth solution and start having multivitamin supplements at least for the time, uh, you know, you're not coming out of your house. And uh, you can try the Berkowitz Grow Foaming Solution. Apply it every day on your scalp, 1 ml solution, massage it with the pulp of your fingers for 5 minutes and uh, use it every day regularly for at least 3 months. Have the supplements for at least 3 months. You'll see wonderful results after 6 weeks of using it. So, but you have to be regular. That's the catch. Yeah. Um, so then we have um, um, a few questions about, um, I think uh, there is a question about uh, what, what uh, medicines can women safely take? I mean, what, what is the study on sop, sopamato 
and of course we know that finasteride is not really uh, shouldn't be have um, had by women so what are the some other medicines that a woman can safely take no finasteride can be taken by women uh, in uh, a different dose than what men take okay. um, so that has to be prescribed by uh, you know your okay. doctor only do not take it otherwise on your own and uh, saw palmetto is um, a you know a good molecule which is under good research uh, that it is a good replacement for finasteride so if you do not want to take finasteride uh, you can take saw palmetto finasteride should not be taken when you're uh, pregnant when you're lactating or breastfeeding your child because uh, that can lead to side effects uh, so that time it should be completely avoided and um, otherwise it can be taken and for uh, pattern hair loss in women um any um, like perhaps um, a, a gentleman here has said that you know he's been taking uh, prp for about a year but he doesn't find it as effective as it's considered to be so he's not saying that it does not have any result he's saying that perhaps the results expectation that he had from the treatment uh, are not met so what what do you advise him what what so uh, i want to ask if um, that gentleman has been using hair growth solutions and having supplements along he with prp and minoxidil there is no like he hasn't talked about the supplements yeah so uh, either taking finasteride or some growth sub ideally finasteride should be taken along with uh, minoxidil uh, if you have patterned hair loss um, and it should be continued for so if you've been continuing it regularly for a year and if you've not seen any effects i would really want to see your pictures of before and after first uh, because sometimes we can over expect as well or sometimes we forget how we looked a year back you know so i would always recommend all my patients that whenever you start a treatment whether it is only just a solution that you're applying and having medication oral medications just take your picture before you start the treatment and take a picture after the treatment so that you can compare the results yeah. it's very important to do that because we just forget we forget how we looked before uh okay um so there is a, a question that with covid 19 threatening to be around for at least a year or so can one go for hair transplant right now and is it safe to do so yes so totally depends where you're getting it done from um here at bokovits we take full precaution uh that uh all our entire team wears a proper ppe kit before uh, you know they start the surgery uh, all the necessary precautions are taken by the counselors as well who are there uh, as a part of the team and um, whether you are entering the clinic or sitting at the clinic or getting the surgery done uh, everything is properly uh, sanitized um, and fumigated before you enter uh, any surgical uh, yeah. uh, theater or ot so all the precautions should be taken wherever you get your transplant done from and uh, it is actually a good time to get the transplant done because uh, even if there is downtime you do not have to go to your office you have to be uh, there at your home working from home so it is actually a very good time for getting a transplant done uh what about those that have uh, that, that perhaps started their treatment before covid and but uh, because of covid so all our clinics they, have opened now you can uh, they, visit our clinic so not just clinics they're saying that because perhaps not because of uh, availability of uh, medicines or because of perhaps like clinics like ours being shut they haven't had um, any treatment sessions for the last 2 3 months so how do they cover that period for hair loss uh, if you're taking a prp treatment and if you've not taken a treatment for 3 months it's absolutely fine mm -hmm. do not fret at all if you've uh, continued the medications at home regularly do not worry at all if you've stopped the medications also then you have a reason to worry but if you've continued that no problem okay so there is also a question about how the impact of certain medicines of hair loss on uh, uh, libido and uh, hmm yes so uh, it has been um, you know seen that finasteride um, which has an enzyme called 5 alpha reductase um, now this uh, molecule uh, actually decreases libido and uh, it also can lead to erectile dysfunction well let me tell you that it's just 1% of individuals who might experience this side effect and even if they experience it once they stop the medication yeah your libido or if there is any erection problem it 
completely gets resolved. So there is no permanent dysfunction that happens because of having this medication. And also, I think minoxidil has no, uh, like minoxidil hasn't reported, they, they no, haven't been reported for any such uh, side no, effects with minoxidil. Minoxidil is just a vasodilator. It increases the dilation of your vessels. Oh, uh, I think that's about it. Those are the questions that I can see mostly. Um, any closing thoughts, doctor? So um, I guess it was, uh, I hope you all find, found it useful. We have tried to uh, cover almost all the questions that uh, everybody had and uh, on hair loss, on solutions for baldness. And I'm sure uh, a lot of you must be having some of the other questions also in your mind. Uh, we are all, uh, you know, Berkowitz is open. All the clinics are open. We are there for you uh, through uh, video consultations. Our team is there for you to help you out if you have any queries. And um, I hope you found this session useful. I hope you've taken some notes and uh, hope to see you all very, very soon. If you want us to do such webinars uh, again, you can please uh, leave a comment below on which topic would you want us to do it on, whether it should be on skin, whether it should be on PCOD, whether it should be uh, on any other topic which you think is important to all of you so that, uh, you know, we can uh, have such conversations more. Great. So again, uh, thank you all so much. I mean, um, we've had a fantastic response to this webinar and this has only motivated us to uh, trouble you further and perhaps do more webinars and hopefully uh, a few of you will also attend those. And uh, these have been um, uh, very knowledgeable for me and I hope for everyone who's been attending uh, the webinar as well. And I think thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you all. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.